Hi, my name's Samuel. I'm an engineering student at Imperial College London, and you're tuned into Getting Personal with Team Upside. I'd say for me, it was just keeping the the word count, to be fair. For us, like my sixth form nature, we were very proactive in year 12. Mm. So a lot of experiences, a lot of um, going to uh, workshops around your um, around the course you're planning to study and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So then trying to get all of that in there while well, sticking to the world count, world count was difficult, yeah. I wrote, to be fair, I wrote two. I Like my first one, it didn't really change much from my first one. I wrote one okay. and then it was just constantly t- tweaking that one with a teacher. Oh, I see. And, um, I see. Like I, I even sent it to you. Like I sent one copy mm-hmm. to you because I did the Cambridge app. Yep. It was my head of uh, the head of sixth form. He was reviewing it constantly. Now he gives like the final, the final like tick and saying, yeah, this is good to go. Yeah. In terms of um, looking over the personal statement constantly, it was my physics teacher at that school and my previous physics from Carlton. Okay. So I was in contact with him, just emailing him. And he even helped me with like interview prep and all of that. So okay. yeah, he was one of the biggest help, I'd say. I don't know if mine was orthodox at all. I think for me, I just literally, I started mine in the summer before before um, returning to year 13. So because I knew I was in the Cambridge application, I was stressing about it through summer. Yeah. So I just literally just jumped on my laptop, started, just started typing from the start what made me interested in it. Um, that was like my first paragraph, introducing um, like my interest in the subject, what has driven me to, to pick the subject. And then the second paragraph expands on that, talks about a few things I've done in the in the field. The second ba- paragraph was a lot more, was a lot more weighty, talked about books I'd read, um, experiences I had partaken in. And then like the final paragraph was just explaining how I feel like my A-level choices had contributed to, to my decision and how work experiences I had done for example, I was tutoring that year, how I felt that would be beneficial in representing my character, basically. So I was talking about something to do with my GCC course. I did GCC electronics and then I moved on. I was just like, however, the most important part, uh, the most important point in my decision to pursue electrical engineering into tertiary education was the discovery of the, the central role electrical engineers play in solving humanity's greatest problems. So this altruistic application of um, creativity inspired an enduring curiosity <laughs> in the discipline. I honestly played the game. I looked at um, Cambridge's sort of reading list. Imperial didn't really have one and I knew I was targeting Cambridge and Imperial mainly. So um, I went through their reading list for engineering and read those books. Mm-hmm. I actually bought quite a few. I got like three books from the reading list. Um, anyone who wants one, hit me up. I'll, I'll give them to you. <laughs> that's, that's, that's nice. But yeah, um, yeah. So I went through the reading list, read a few books. I also I knew there was some topics in electrical engineering that I was really interested in, like electromagnetism. Mm-hmm. So I picked up um, like a first year undergraduate's book and mm-hmm. read through that as well. Um, I mentioned that. I mentioned some points that I found interested through that as well. And for me, it was just I feel like what what solidified my personal statement was the work experiences I had done and personal projects I had done. Mm. So um, in year 12, I'd spent two weeks at um, Imperial College with a um, an undergraduate there, a second year undergraduate who, who yeah, he was working on a, um, he was redoing his first year um, project basically. He wasn't happy with how the first year project went and he felt like he could do some modifications to it. And I shadowed him and helped him to a certain extent on building a, a, a rover. It was just like, it detects radiation and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And through that, I then went on to go build my own autonomous vehicle because mm-hmm. um, I was starting to explore something through an EPQ. So mm-hmm. I just wanted to see, like my question was, as technology progresses, are we as humans regressing? So I started investigating that through um, the design of, a, of, a, um, of an autonomous vehicle. I used a Raspberry Pi to program it in, in Python, etc. So when I when it came to my interview now, they were really just interested in the projects I had done and etc. So yeah, okay, so that's what I, f- I feel like made it stand out. So I had done a formal application for a work experience in electrical in the electrical engineering department, and so off the back of that, I networked with one of the senior 
uh, professors at Imperial and I asked listen like, I've really enjoyed this work experience that I've had could I come back and possibly shadow one of your students okay. now the student who I shadowed was in his tutor group okay so that's when like after a few emails just liaising with each other he was just like yeah no no worries calm down um, you'll meet my student you guys can work together and you can see what he does and what it's like to be on the course the Imperial hosts work experience um program definitely no for for electrical and electronic engineering they do i'm not so sure with other departments but yeah i'd say outside of practical work experience because see the issue is here we don't really go into depth with electricity even at a level for engineering is a very foreign subject to people best ways to show that you are competent enough to embark on this course is to read around the area try to understand the area um take additional courses i'd say in programming programming is very important i'd say okay learn some some form of software you need to get yeah get yourself up to speed with software definitely aside from practicals mm, i believe there's books on amazon where it's just like electronic hobby books so like just building stuff at home getting one of those buying the components seeing how they work with each other and then if you'd like to just to um explore further start studying how those components individually work the science behind it and then from there you can see like oh is this something that you want to do do you like how these things interact with each other would you like to be someone who builds these things i don't know i gave a generic line which was like through my a-level courses i've developed as an analytical thinker um that was a bit generic anything else i'm not so sure i'm because i had a lot in mind when it came to cutting it down it was literally just we're going to make sure it is just punch every single paragraph is punchy yeah, yeah. and so there was there were there, like there wasn't any room for anything like that my teacher wouldn't let it fly <laughs>